This show is live. Despite our best efforts, anything can happen. Some viewers may be offended. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, the temperatures are warming up. We can't go shirtless just yet. Um, no, it's going to be a little while before that. But uh, spring is in the air. The Blue Jays kicking off their uh, spring training schedule yesterday. And uh, we're going to talk a bit of baseball today. Uh, very, very happy to have back with us here at the table, uh, J.G. Jean-Gilles Leroc uh, from the Baseball Academy. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of baseball with you and also a great program that uh, is going to be getting underway at uh, your school, the best program. We'll tell folks about that. Uh, we're also going to be joined by uh, Hall of Fame uh, sports baseball writer Bob Elliott. Uh, Bob's uh, down covering the Blue Jays uh, in Florida where it's warmer than Sudbury. And uh, we'll talk with Bob later in the program. And we're also going to be uh, talking with uh, the general manager, vice president of uh, operations for the Toronto Blue Jays, Alex Anthopoulos. And, of course, uh, Alex also uh, down in uh, spring training in Florida right now as the, the club kicked off their spring schedule, the loss yesterday and a win today against Pittsburgh. So uh, a few questions uh, for Alex, certainly Bob and Jean Giel as well. Uh, the phone numbers, as always, in Sudbury, you can call us at 705. 586-3044, uh, out-of-town number for all our fans and folks up in uh, Timmins, Elliott Lake, Tomiskaming Shores, Capus Gasing, Sturgeon Falls as well, 1-844-710-3808. Once again, 1-844-710-3808. Now, before we uh, head over to the phones and, and talk to Alex, uh, JG, tell me a little bit about what you're excited about the Toronto Blue Jays, what you've seen thus far and, and the moves that they made in the offseason. Very excited about uh, Russell Martin. I think he, um, you know, as much as we'll say Jose Batista is probably the face of the Toronto Blue Jays, I think they have a new face with uh, Russell Martin. Just the way, even watching him in spring training, the way he's been handling interviews, uh, you know, he's open to talk to anybody, um, the way he's handled the pitching staff already. You know, just the way he's just kind of relaxed. If you, if you watch some of the spring training games so far, just, you know, they'll throw to him and he just kind of, everything's going to be okay and I think the pitchers can honestly feel that they're going to throw a ball in the dirt he's going to block it somebody's going to run he's going to throw them out um, so it's like having a coach on the field so I think that's going to make a huge difference and a big big impact on the team this year of course they dodged the bullet a little bit with uh, with Saunders injury uh, my gosh when he first came out they were talking all-star break but uh, again we'll get an update from Alex in a moment and uh, there seems to be there was a ton of moves made in the offseason and and part of it, I guess, is, you know, yourself as coaching a baseball team, you can have great players, but if the chemistry is not there, it doesn't really make a difference. Yeah, and, and like we were talking about when we were off air, Santana, just the fact that Jays have Santana in the mix, I think what he's going to bring to the table, um, I'm not expecting him to win 20 games to the Blue Jays or anything, but just, you know, he, he won a Cy Young, the things he's seen and done, even if he gives a little bit of advice to a kid like Hutchison, right? A little, you know, here and there to be able to help him out, I think that'll go a long way for the team. Yeah, and, you know, you, uh, everybody is in first place come spring training, <laughs> and, and that's the important part. It's just a question of, uh, of working it over, and uh, it'll certainly be interesting to see. And uh, I'm not sure if we've got Alex on the line just yet, as of now. Okay, Alex Anthopoulos, uh, good evening, sir, and welcome to Sports Talk Now. Glad to be on, guys. Thank you so much for taking time. I, I know you might be a little busy now. Spring training kind of does that for you, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We just uh, we just got done. I just got back from Bradenton, Florida, and I'm actually on my uh, drive back to my my place now. But uh, nice game today, everyone. And it's always good to win, even though the wins don't matter. But you still will prefer to win than lose. So good day overall. I would love to have your uh, cell phone plan. My gosh, I don't think I've seen any pictures of you without your cell phone up against your head. You've got to be your ear has just got to be ringing constantly, doesn't it? You know what? Yeah, I probably am on the phone more than I should be, and my wife is not a big fan <laughs> of that a lot of times. And I try to put it down when I get home. And um, but you know, especially there's always something going on. As you know, we got the draft, we got international signings. Obviously, you're you're doing stuff with the big league team as well. Just seems like there's always some something to do. So comes with the job, but it's obviously a job you wouldn't want to trade for anything. And coincidentally, uh, we do have a graphic up your view, and uh, in fact, you're on a phone again, so that works out well. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the off season. Again, some very, very busy times. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I heard like, was it over 70 different moves? Is that is that out to lunch, or is that pretty close to what you heard? You know what? Yeah, I think someone may have said 
lunatic council, and so on. Okay. Um, but looking at a roster alone, you're going to have a bunch of guys coming off the roster at free agents. You're certainly going to probably get up to 40 when you get to spring training, and then just some of the other moves that we were going to make. But you never go into an off season planning on necessarily a certain number of moves. It just you have a game plan. You want to make changes. You want to try to improve. Uh, we weren't able to do everything we wanted to uh, because we didn't want to force anything, but we were pretty happy with the things we were able to get done. Alex, it's uh, Gary Beach here, and I'm also joined here in studio with uh, jean gilles Larocque. He's the owner of the Baseball Academy, uh, helping out a lot of Northern Ontario kids who will soon be in the Blue Jays lineup within, <laughs> I would think, within five to ten yeah. years. So this is an important guy that you've got to talk to, and jean gilles has got a question for you. Sure. Hey, Alex, how are you? Good, good. Good. Uh, just a good question. You know, everyone's going to ask you about trades and who's going to play second base and who's going to play short and so on. My question is, when you got into to baseball originally, it, it was scouting, correct? Yeah, it's correct. And I know you're a huge fan of player development and stuff like that. I just, more of a, a comment than a question, you know, just we'd like to thank you in regards to Baseball Canada, what you're doing for Baseball Canada, um, what the Blue Jays are doing for small communities like ourselves. You guys are doing a tremendous job. You know, we had Alan Martin and the guys up here last summer. Um, you guys just done a great job with the Blue Jays to expose yourselves to Canada and uh, showing that you guys care what you guys do. So I think that's a great thing. But my question is, in regards to player development, how, how much do you have your hands in what's going on in regards to player development right now? Yeah, that's a great question. One, I want to thank you guys as well. I know you guys do a lot as, as well, and you should definitely get involved with us. And I can tell you from Paul Beeson, our CEO, it's definitely been a point of emphasis that we brought back camps. We brought back the winter tour. So I'd love to be able to tell you that uh, I'm the guy behind all that. But Paul Beeson, it starts with him. And we have so many people working behind the scenes, a lot of people that are, you know, there's probably too many of names that are involved. But I can tell you from my standpoint, when it comes to player development, um, I'm, not, I'm absolutely not involved in it on a day-to-day. -day. I'm a big believer that you have people running departments. You give them the autonomy and the freedom to do it. Doug Davis is our field coordinator. Mike Mordecai is our coordinator of instruction. Charlie Wilson is our director of minor league operations. And then Tony LaCava, who I work very closely with, he oversees the whole thing. So I'll be kept in, in the loop. Um, I may have some thoughts and some opinions on certain things, but I'll always defer to those guys um, just overall on some of the things they want to do because I do want to empower them. I do want to give them the freedom to do their jobs where I don't micromanage all of it. The same way with scouting. You know, certain philosophies and things that I believe in that I'd like to see them implement, but it's up to them to do it. And, you know, my only real, I don't want to say rule, but I just want to be kept up, up to date and no surprises. And I know Paul Beeson talks about that at our level. We always want to make sure everyone above us is aware and there's no surprises. And from a development standpoint, I'll pretty much support the bulk of what they want to do. I just want to be aware of it before anything significant gets done. Okay, thank you. One more thing, I think it's a great job you guys have left. I don't know if he deserves to be in double or triple A in regards to anything, but coaching at Stubby Clap, having Stubby Clap at the single A level. I think, you know, my personal opinion, again, your best coaches need to be at the single A level just for the fact that's where the kids are going to have the opportunity to grow and need to grow and need to be taught, honestly, some fundamentals. At the triple A level, you're hoping they're, they're almost ready, but uh, what are your thoughts on that, a guy like Stubby in single A? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's some, something that Stubby, when he came over from the Astros, Mike Barnett, our hitting coordinator, he's the one who wanted to hire him. We all know him. Obviously, Stubby is playing career in Canada and everything he's done for, for, for baseball in Canada, and you respect the type of player he was to it. I got a chance to get to know him a little bit more last year going into the Florida State League, and I think Stubby was a huge, had a huge impact on Dom Pompey's development last year in the Florida State League. And, you know, I, I could say, I mean, I remember being down there seeing – Galton before the trade deadline, and I'd been, been asked about him quite a bit by other teams, and I wanted to see him for my, myself. And, you know, I always like to pick the brains of every every coach and get their thoughts and insights. And I asked Stubby what he thought about Dalton, if he could handle the challenge, if he could move up. And you know, I asked I ask, um, the question, you know, is this the guy you think we're going to see on Sports Center one day? You know, it was Sports Desk. And um, he said, yeah, I absolutely believe it. And, you know, you the work that he's done um, – like you said, I do absolutely agree that having those guys at the lower levels is so important because that's where you're building a base and a foundation for these young players, not only from a mechanical standpoint, but even from an approach to the game, having routine, 
all that type of stuff is very important. So, and like you said, when you get to the AAA level, you're getting a lot of minor league free agents, a lot of older guys that are up and down, a lot of guys, unfortunately, and rightfully so, I guess, that are a little disgruntled. They don't want to be at that level. And a lot of times it's more tweaks, but you have a lot more uh, impactful work. I just, is probably the best way to put it at the lower levels when those guys are starting to come through. You talk about a fellow, Dalton Pompey, a young fellow, 22 from from the Toronto area. And of course, his uh, younger brother is uh, is already hitting hitting the marks as far as possible uh, uh, a star as well. Now, this week, you brought in a former Blue Jay and Vernon Wells to try and talk to him a little bit about what he's going to face. And I think Vernon said right off the bat that, uh, you know what, this is a young kid who's got his act together. He said when he started at 20, he thought he knew everything, whereas Dalton sort of just keeping quiet and listening. And, and, and what was the idea behind bringing Vernon in? You know, I've stayed in contact with Vernon over the years. Obviously, I had a pretty good relationship with him. I mean, for him to waive his no-trade clause to go to Anaheim, and you know, not the easiest conversation to have when someone who at the time was really the face of the franchise, obviously had signed a huge contract, and had maintained a good relationship with him. And you know, to the extent that I remember asking Vernon, I think um, we had just traded him, but we had to make a decision on Jose Batista. You know, he had come off that big year, and we had had our own opinions and analysis and so on. But I remember a asking Vernon then if he thought the year that Batista had just had, he had that breakout year, if it was for real and it would, it would continue. And he felt really confident that he had found something and he was going to get it going. And Vernon has always been very quiet um, as a player in his career. Um, he's very intelligent. I mean, anyone that's been around knows that. And he studies the game and he knows the game. So having a guy like that around to work with is Alton Pompey or even a guy like Pilar, these young center fielders that are coming through, is invaluable because he's not that far removed from playing. It's only been two years. And for a guy like Dalton, the one thing is I would, I, I would assume and guarantee that uh, Dalton grew up wa having watched Vernon play, you know, being a Toronto kid and uh, seeing him know what kind of defender he was in the All-Star games and the Silver Sluggers and getting up there at a young age and being a high pick. So, And Vernon's a very easy guy to get along with. He had a great connection with all of his teammates. So um, just kind of stayed in contact with him. He mentioned he was looking to maybe start to kind of dip his toes in the water of getting involved a little bit in the game. And I said, well, why don't we start off, get, get your feet wet, but just come to spring training as long as you want to, just to see how it goes. And uh, he decided to come down for three days, and it seems like it's been a great experience for both, both, both sides so far. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I read later in the story as well, that uh, he, his wife is expecting him back. Apparently does a great breakfast and lunch, so... <laughs> you got to keep that in mind as well. Um, I'd like to talk grass, if we could. Now, not the type of grass you're thinking about, but the, uh, the type of grass. Call, yeah. the, the University of Guelph is working on something special for you guys, right? Yeah, they are. And, um, you know, it's not something that I've been directly involved in, obviously being in the offices day to day. I hear about it, but I know that they've commissioned the University of Guelph, and they're very involved in seeing how viable it is to, uh, to convert the stadium to have a grass field. And, you know, from a, a from a baseball operation standpoint, speaking on behalf of the players, I know they would love to see it. I think our training staff would love to see it as well. Um, I know there's a lot of hurdles, and I think one of the biggest hurdles was the fact that, you know, when the stadium was built, there was no drainage put in there. You had a retractable roof. There was no need. At the time there have drainage, you never had to worry about rain delays. And, you know, the other component is the way the roof is set up. It doesn't completely retract, and there is issue with sun. And even, I guess, air, air flow is very important as well, and it's something that I had no idea when it came to growing grass. So uh, all that being said, I, I, I probably don't know a whole lot more than that, but I love the fact that, uh, you know, the ball club's really starting to spend more time on this, and hopefully they'll be able to, to get it done because it would be great to be, uh, you know, it'll be only, I guess, you know, we're one of the last two clubs that's still playing on turf, and, I think there is there is a competitive advantage with those other teams that don't have to play on it. Alex, I also want to talk about, and I need a, a quick, honest answer from you. Michael Saunders, shagging a few flies, and all of a sudden, down he goes. Your heart must have just dropped right down when you heard about that. Were you there when, when he accidentally, uh, when he did that trip um, on the field? No, I was not there. Um, you know, I, I got a phone call about <laughs> it, and uh, yeah, you just... You know, you know, he said, your, our trainer called, and he tried to explain what happened, but he said that Michael had heard a pop. And whenever you think about a knee and says he hears a pop, I was thinking, okay, he's done for the year. And, you know, a lot of emotions go through it. Just the, the timing before we even played a game, 
um, the cir circumstances that had occurred. But, you know, I guess the silver lining in all of it is that, um, you know, he's going to be back a lot sooner than we expected. And if he's only going to miss a week or two of the season, in the long run, it'll end up being fine. Yeah, because originally I think they were talking All-Star break and now talking probably uh, uh, mid-April, I guess. So, so that's good news. But it also got you into a situation where you, you have to go plan B, plan C, and, and you made a couple of moves as well, and, and you've got a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a, a padding, if you will, if, if Michael doesn't respond as well as, uh, as you hope he does. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we're always going to constantly monitor any players that are in free agents. I, even, you know, I have a free agent board in my office in Toronto. Um, you know, basically a two-year look, and I transport it down to spring training because you know that just to continue to just be reminded about who's out there and things that might might occur. And um, you know, you're always going to be aware of it. Guys that have out clauses in minor league deals, guys that are out of options that aren't maybe going to make their team. And you look at even last year, a guy like Chris Young, Seattle got him at the end of spring training, had a great year for them. Or Aaron Harang with with Atlanta, and he opted out of his deal with the Indians and. You know, he had a great year for the Braves, so you never know when you're going to get someone either in the middle of spring, at the end of spring, free agency. Uh, you just con you constantly stay on top of it. Uh, you're always going to look to add players because you're going to need depth. You never know when someone else is going to get hurt, or there's uh, there's you're going to need to make a change from a performance st standpoint as well. Glad to have on the phone Senior VP of Baseball Operations, uh, General Manager for the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, Alex Anthopoulos. Um, also in camp, Mr. Santana. Now. This is a fellow who's, you know, been at the top of the top of the game, obviously, as a as former Cy Young winner, and he's come to camp with a great attitude from everything I've read about uh, his, his, his time there so far. Yeah, he's been great. He's a total pro. I know a lot of our young players are really excited to have him around. I mean, we all know what kind of career he's had, but he's also one of the most well-respected uh, players in, in, the, in the game, work ethic, the way he goes about it. He's certainly not doing it for the money. He's probably made close to... $200 million in his, his career and someone like him to still want to work through some things and try to get back and, and, and compete and he's, he's a good role model and, a, and a example for some of our young players to uh, be around as well but you know that wasn't the reason he was brought in we got to see him pitch in the winter uh, he made he had two outings that we saw and he, he looked good and then ultimately his, his shoulder got a little sore and um, we feel like we've had some success rehabbing players with shoulder injuries and you know, knowing what we saw in the winter and knowing the fact that it's a minor league deal and there's not you know, a penny in terms of salary guaranteed when it comes to that. There's no down, downside for us, and it's all upside. So let's take a shot. If we can get him back on the field and, and strong, we think we'd have a, a chance to get a very good, good starter on our hands. So all the Blue Jays fans right across Canada, of course, you got a ton of uh, Blue Jay fans up here in Sudbury as well. We're all waiting for the snow to go away. Um, Put on your, uh, I, I know you've got a crystal ball in front of you, what you'd like. <laughs> what, what are we looking at? How many wins is it going to take to win the uh, AL East this year? Great question. I mean, I, I think you never know from year to year. I think there's so much parity in the division. I mean, all five clubs, you normally in every division you've got a team, at least one, that's saying we might need to take a step back. We may need to retool a little bit. Uh, in this division, all five, all, all these all these clubs are sitting there saying we have a chance, a chance to win. We have a chance to try to move forward. So, um, you, know, you look at last year, and 88 wins would have got you into the playoffs as a wild card team. You know, I don't think there's any reason to expect it to be anything less than that. The goal isn't to be in the playoffs. You, know, you want to win the division. You want to have a, a full playoff series rather than one game. Um, but that being said, I think all of us are going to beat, beat up on each other, and health is going to be a critical thing for all of our clubs because I think it's really tough right now to handicap who's going to come out on top in the East because there's a lot of talent. One final question before you head off uh, to uh, home and, and a good supper, I hope. Um, Russell Johnson, how important is this uh, signing going to be for the Toronto Blue Jays? Uh, again, hearing nothing but good things about this young man. Yeah, he's been, uh, Ru Russ has been great. Um, I know there's a lot of excitement. And sure, the fact that he's Canadian is a nice story, but we all know he's one of the best players in the, in the league. And what he can do with some of our young starters and even, the established guys, guys like R.A. and Ben Burley and, and so on. Uh, he's just one of those guys who's a great player that handles the staff well, you know, can, has a great arm, uh, frames extremely well, can steal strikes for you, has a very good approach at, at, at the plate. We say, we'll draw his walks, we'll put the ball in play, and is a tremendous athlete and is just a total pro. 
you know, we get to see him now a little bit day in and day out in the clubhouse. He's one of the earliest guys in here. He's pretty much the last guy to leave it every day. And he just has a real pro. He just seems like a real pro. He's there to get his work, work in. He, he can have his fun, but it's serious in a good way. And it's something that it, it's great to have from a guy like that behind the plate. Uh, two quick questions uh, still about Russell. Um, there's a statistic. Can you share a little bit with the statistic you guys share uh, or use basically for the catchers where pitches that are borderline, you know, the statistic where catchers that are turning those balls into strikes or keeping strikes into strikes. I know I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys kept that uh, close to your heart when you guys were looking at picking up Russell and, you know, you're looking at Navarro, those types of things. Can you share that a little bit with us? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's absolutely something that you can quantify now, and not everyone quantifies it exactly the same way, but you absolutely can quantify the way, you know, we call it guys frame and guys can really present the pitch to the umpire and balls that it might be borderline and someone else may not do as good a job that it gets called by the ball by the umpire. And guys that are very good receivers can get that strike call. And, you know, what it can do for the guys on, on, on the mound, changing counts, you know, being ahead in the count rather than behind in the count, uh, the impact is huge. And you know, there's ways to attempt to quantify the impact it can have on your team. Uh, but you just talk about extending innings. We even we're talking about deep defensive first, first base. And you know, there's a play that Derek Barton the other day made. And if he had made that play, the inning ends up getting extended. Your starter's out on the mound a lot longer. Well, it's the same thing behind on the plate. I mean, being 1-2 instead of 2-1, the impact on what you're going to throw, the impact on the way the inning's going to develop, how long your starter's out there. Um, the carryover effect is huge. And then what ultimately it does to your bullpen as well. And you know, the other thing that we can't quantify is game calling. But you know, I think that's one thing that Dion Navarro excelled at, but there is no stat out there for it. But we do know he does a, a tremendous job. And I, I think I think Martin's going to do the same thing as well. So those are all things that are very important behind and in play. But framing, there's no doubt, has become uh, something that everyone talks more and more about. And Rush has been one of the top guys in the league the last few years. Alex, thank you very, very much for taking time to talk with us tonight, and uh, best of luck. We'll all be watching for sure. Alex Anthopoulos, the uh, Senior Vice President, Baseball Operations, and General Manager for the Toronto Blue Jays. Have a good night. Thanks. All right, guys. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break and be back with Sports Talk now. Again, we're with uh, JG LaRock, uh, Baseball Academy. A little bit later in the program, we'll be talking with a Hall of Fame sports writer Bob Elliott. Again, the numbers, give us a call, 705-586-3044. And the out-of-town number, 1-844-710-3808. We're back in a moment with Sports Talk Now. Here comes Slattery breaking over the blue line. He cuts inside. He shoots. He scores! Are you all right? That guy knocked you clear across the ring. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I'm good. What day is it today? It's Tuesday, which means it's time to catch the Northern Edge on East Link TV at 8.30. The most comprehensive NOJHL coverage, including exclusive interviews and in-depth analysis. Yeah, you'll be all right, bud. Let's go. One out of seven children across Canada are at risk of going to school on an empty stomach. That's why Breakfast Club of Canada provides a healthy breakfast to school kids nationwide every day, which can help to build a bright future for Canada's children. But there are still many more children who need our help. So please help us provide breakfast to the children who need it. Donate now on our new giving platform, ICanGoWithout.com, and visit BreakfastClubCanada.org for more information. Discover a new culture each week through the preparation of favorite dishes from around the world. Each Tuesday at 9.30 p.m., your host and chef, Kyle Jennings, introduces you to a new Canadian citizen and cooks a traditional dish from their homeland. 
This show is not just about learning a new recipe. It's about a new Canadian adapting to new traditions. Kitchen Culture, Tuesdays at 9.30 p.m. only on Eastlink TV Channel 10. Welcome back. Sports Talk Now. We just had uh, Blue Jays General Manager Alex Anthopoulos, and I apologize. I know there are folks trying to call in, and it was my mistake. I gave Alex the wrong number. We will correct it. I know there was probably 45, 50 calls waiting to come in at that point in time. So we will correct it, and uh, we will uh, allow you to get those calls in. Uh, Jean-Gilles uh, Laroc, who is um, Baseball Academy, also uh, a high school teacher here in Sudbury, and you've got a really neat program called the BEST program. What does BEST stand for? BEST stands for Bishop's Elite Sports Training Program. Um, so we're, we're offering it starting in the fall. So basically it's for grade 9 and 10 students. But what we have currently in place right now at our school is called a Specialist High Skills Major and with a Fitness Focus. So this is for students in grade 11 and 12 that have an interest in fitness or the health care or health, health area basically, right? So if they want to become kinesiologists or, you know, dental hygienist or anything in, in that field basically they take certain classes in grade 11 and 12 that would help them get into certain colleges and universities or mm -hmm. workplace so what was happening was we had necessarily nothing in place for grade 9 and 10 students right so we get them excited in grade 8 to come to our school for this program fitness focus and next thing you know they get there in grade 9 cam ready to go and you don't start till grade 11 or 12 which is two years down the road right so now we think we really found um, a great bridging activity or gr bridging program to help the kids adjust to that 11 and 12 later on but we've tweaked it a little bit more also. So a student will, will come to a class with myself from September to June. Uh, That's a long class. It is, it is a long class, but it's only <laughs> 75 minutes a day. We'll give you Christmas off, we will give you uh, Easter. <laughs> so what happens during the class is we're gonna go over several, several things that's uh, what's going to help the student athlete and I really really want to emphasize student athlete I think some of us get caught up that we have kids that are athlete students they are student athletes please remember that for your kids um, so what happens with this is we're going to put them through the through this course or this class and the class is going to deal with things like visualization training uh, strength and conditioning hydration nutrition uh, sports psych it's we're just going to you know expose them to a lot of different things and it won't be my job as the teacher to help them with their slap shot, you know, help them throw a curveball. That has nothing to do with it. We're trying to develop athletes, not, uh, you know, baseball players, hockey players, wherever the case may be. That's kind of the basis of the program anyways. Well, the whole idea of it, and you, t you take a look, um, as Alex was just on, and we're talking about Dalton Pompey, 22 years of age, and, you know, you're looking at a, a baseball career where you could make literally millions of dollars, and how do you react to it? So if you've got a program, say, like this in place, where it has to do with uh, psychology, uh, visualization. Um, I remember not that long ago, people would say, oh, we've got to talk about visualization. And, and I heard about this quite a few years ago from um, a sports psychologist who was actually working with the uh, Olympic team, Peter, and I can't think of his last name. Uh, he was working with the Olympic team and it was throughout all the sports and basically uh, visualizing what you want the outcome to be and making it happen. I know golfers have been using it for years and years and years. And, and also, you know, that type of thing is really going to help them up to, to deal with the pressures that if they continue on in, in their sporting career too. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing with this program. We're going, we, we call it Bishop's Elite Sports Training Program. However, I also want to start targeting the kids that, what if they couldn't afford to play AAA hockey and you know, mm -hmm. get in this program, right? There's those kids that fall through their cracks. But back to the, the visualization, not just that, being good is not good enough anymore. Like mm -hmm. athletes now, we're breaking records at the Olympics like crazy now, what's happening. And I'll give you a perfect example right here's Michael Phelps. Yep. So in 2008, Michael Phelps wins eight gold medals, okay? He wins two of those gold medals. So the previous record was seven, he gets eight. From us, knowing what Michael Phelps eats for breakfast now, everybody knows who Michael Phelps are. He won two of those gold medals for with under four one hundredths of a second. Okay, he won two loads. So when you break that down, grab a stopwatch, try that. You can't even do it with your thumb probably. He won two gold medals in that time. 
Is it because he's lucky? Is it because he worked harder than the people in the pool? It's not. That doesn't exist anymore, working hard. It has to do with his nutrition, his hydration, his mental preparation, even the clothing he's wearing in the pool. You know, technology has advanced so many sports. Uh, so it's, it's a package deal now. It's just not, I'm going to try hard, and that's how it's going to work. And I think this, what this program is about, it's looking at all those different angles. Because it's not your job as you know, your son or daughter's hockey coach to, to do these things. You have two hours with them, and you bring them to a tournament. You don't have time to talk about hydration, visualization drills, this, this, that, and the other. You just want them to skate, shoot. Tac you want to worry about tactics more than anything else. And this is where we'll take care of everything else. That sounds great. Now it's Bishop Alexander Carter. Correct. Uh, so kids that are interested, they just phone the school. Yeah, and, they can call uh, the school at 705-969-2212. All right, let's talk Baseball Academy. I know you had a recent <coughs> signing, uh, a young fellow. And unfortunately, I couldn't make it over to it, but tell us a little bit about the, the latest signing uh, from Sudbury. Yeah, so we have uh, Tyson Trzinski, mm -hmm. who went to uh, Dakota County Technical College in Minnesota. So he's, uh, he's finishing off this year here. He'll be heading there at the end of August uh, to go into school. They're looking for him to play a big role uh, behind the plate for them. Uh, we also have uh, Chase Davidson, who's currently now at West Virginia Tech. Um, he threw his first uh, first inning uh, collegiate, at the collegiate level, first hit the first hitter. <laughs> got the nerves out of the way, got out of the next, threw well the next Since couple innings. It's a trend, innings. though, because the next guy's going to be a little <laughs> bit nervous coming in there, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, good for him. He, you know, I'm, I can just imagine how hard he's worked, and uh, he gets that opportunity, then he, he settled down right after that. Uh, we have Curtis Johnson, who's at West Virginia State now. Um, he got into their first game. They were in Georgia their first weekend. He got a couple innings in. I think he struck out five of the six hitters he faced. Um, we have J.D. Bryce that's out in Indiana. So things are really coming into place, and we're going to have a couple of, at least one more signing by the end of the year. Uh, I hope to announce that in the next month or so with one of our young men. And, uh, yeah, things are just growing. So why is that? Why all of a sudden are we getting, uh, are, are these players having these opportunities? Is it networking? They say, hey, you know what, they're not too bad. Uh, <laughs> maybe they just got overlooked before. Yeah. Well, I remember when Greg Zahn was up here about two years ago, he had talked about, you know, he played in a high school in California where one of the kids from his high school got drafted, and it opened the door for the rest of the people, basically, from his high school. So, you know, th two, three, four more kids got drafted. And he said, that's what's going to happen in Sudbury. That was his exact, exact where he said, what's going to happen in Sudbury? They're going to find out when you guys can play, and they're going to say, wow, what's going on up there? You know, what are they producing? Where are these kids coming from? Just like everywhere else. And uh, our kids are obviously doing a good job south of the border. And, uh, you know, we're hoping to get kids to the T12 tournament on the provincial team, so on and so forth. That's the next step. Well, one of the guys who's responsible, besides yourself, is a fellow by the name of uh, Bob Elliott. And uh, Bob joins us on the phone right now. Bob, uh, welcome to Sports Talk Now. Hey, how you doing, guys? We're doing great. Um, I had a chance to, to, to take a glance at the uh, baseball, uh, Canadian Baseball Network website, and uh, Jean, Jean Gilles and I are talking. It's, it really is. Uh, I was astounded, honest to God I was, at the number of, of players that... Uh, Canadians who are, are going out and, and excelling in baseball and I mean you've seen it for years Bob so you're not overly surprised or are you? Well I think uh, I think uh, I remember asking this simple question uh, how many Canadians do you think are playing in the States? It was in uh, 99 I think and uh, a guy with a blue jay said oh maybe a hundred but there's no way you'd ever be able to figure it out so I kind of took that as a personal challenge <laughs> and, uh, I think the first year there was 490, and then last year there was over 800 playing college. Uh, count. That's with the pr main proportion of their schedule south of the border, which would include uh, UBC and Winnipeg and, and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Douglas College in uh, New Westminster. But uh, it's, uh, it's a good bet to take to the hockey rink the next time you go to a peewee game or something else if your son has a bit schooling paid for playing hockey or baseball it would stun uh, the, the hockey numbers is under 500. I know that uh, we're still kind of stuck in a deep freeze up here and, and a ton, five to ten centimeters of snow yesterday so it'll be a bit before the the diamonds are ready to go but um, with Jean Gilles and, and the baseball academy uh, you guys can work inside and work on a lot of the skills that they can take to outside as well. Yeah, definitely, and and that's the thing yeah, too. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really been part of the advancement. I think it started in '99 uh, with the national team uh, uh, making these trips. Uh, they go, they come to Florida next month. Uh, uh, they play against pros, uh, first and second year pros, and uh, it's easier for the scouts to evaluate them. You know, if you, they 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 come. To 
scouts complain to me all the time about going into Pennsylvania and seeing the the one good pitcher on one team and the one good hitter on the other team, and all they told is uh, the coach tells them, well, don't give this guy any strikes. Well, the, the first and second year pros, they don't care, and they're just wasting some high school kid getting to work in. And, you know, that's when Laurie, Brett Laurie hit the five home runs in the doubleheader, all the way off 90 plus fastballs. That's, that's easy to evaluate, you know, with the wood bat. And and then and then it was also about the time in '99 when the indoor facilities started and guys guys got a lot more serious. And I, I was up there uh, a year ago or two years ago at, at the, for the banquet. And, uh, two years ago, yeah. John Gio, I can attest, does a good job. I know that uh, you're you're down in Florida now. I read uh, read the column the other day. You're also a writer for the uh, the Toronto Sun, and you. you You've been making a, an annual trek to, uh, to to Tom Cheek's home. Tell us a little bit about that story and and, and what it means for you to go back there. Well, it's uh, uh, it's kind of maudlin, but uh, you know it's uh, I just uh, kind of take the opportunity. Uh, I remember the first uh, I was there with Cito uh, Gaston. It was about forty. Or, uh, they had a little. Uh, Tom passed. It was in uh, it was during in October, and I was in Houston, so I did not make the funeral. But they had a reception, a memorial service the next spring, and I was there. And uh, and uh, it's it's not really a headstone; it's like a bench, which are very popular here. And that's the way uh, his wife Shirley designed it. And she invited any anybody who was in the neighborhood. In, down to see the Blue Jays or whatever, just to sit on the bench and talk baseball. And uh, I've never ever sat down, but I just stand there and you know I just kind of mumble a few things, and <laughs> keep him up to date. And uh, I know he's watching, and uh, I know his heart's for the Blue Jays. He was, he was a great, great man. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to the phone lines. Uh, we've got Doug. Uh, go ahead, Doug. You've got a question for us. Caller, Doug, are you on the line? All right, we'll try and get back to Doug in just a moment. Uh, phone numbers again, if you're in Sudbury, it's 705-586-3044. And the out-of-town number, wherever you're watching tonight, uh, L8 Lake, Timmins, Sturgeon Falls, Kapuskasing, Tamiskaming Shores, the toll-free number is 1-844-710-3808. Uh, Bob, tell us a little bit about what you think the Blue Jays uh, have in store for their fans this year. You, you've seen a couple of the games. Uh, early on, obviously, but uh, what do you think of this uh, baseball club? Well, they've improved greatly behind the plate with uh, with uh, Russell Martin, and they've improved greatly at third base with Donaldson. I think uh, uh, if you look at any of those advanced stats, uh, he's uh, the only guy that was better than uh, Josh Donaldson the last year, last two years combined was uh, was a fellow named uh, Trout, who won an MVP and was second the other year, but I, you know, I still worry. It's like there's no such thing as a perfect team, and they have a hole at second base. They're uncertain who's going to play there. They have a rookie center fielder, and there's always a danger with rookies. I mean, Carlos Delgado, as great as he was, uh, 475 home runs. He was, uh, I think it was about April 20th, and he had more home runs than singles. And then on uh, June 15th, he was back at Syracuse. They figured him out, so... Uh, Dalton Pompey had a great start last year, and uh, the other thing that worries me is the bullpen. You know, they they have yet to find a solution there. I mean, Aaron Sanchez did very well uh, last year, uh, and basically with one pitch in 30 innings or something. But that's not established. You know, like that's not like having Tom Hankey or Dwayne Ward. All right, we're going to try Doug one more time on that line. Doug, are you there now? 0 for 2. I can't hear you, Doug. Speak up. Don't be nervous. Okay, we're having some issues with the phone there tonight. Uh, Can what, you hear me? What, se, se, Bob, is that you? You're still yep. there, Bob, right? Yep. Okay, yep. excellent. Well, Doug, for some reason, I don't know if the quarter's running out or exactly what's <laughs> happening, but uh, we will endeavor to try and get him back. Um, you've written three books so far, uh, Hardball, uh, George Bell, uh, the uh, ultimate Blue Jays trivia book in 93 and of course the northern game which has to do with all the baseball players from Sudbury it, is, is it not Bob or no uh, <laughs> no it's uh, the whole country 
the whole country. <laughs> uh, baseball, Canadian Way, that was back in 2005. What's next on your uh, authoring duties? Have you got anything in mind for that yet? Um, yeah, I had, a, I had a, uh, an offer to do one. Uh, well, I had a couple, but uh, I don't know how many books. I, I spent so much time on the website, to tell you the truth. I don't know how much... Uh, it's. Uh, I remember the first book I wrote on Bell. I, I read somebody saying, "Well, it's nine months, and it's um, w women women authors have said it's as painful as, as having a baby." And uh, uh, obviously, I've never had a baby, but <laughs> man, it's painful and stressful, and uh, it's it's a ton of work, and uh, and uh, I don't I don't really know. Uh, there's a couple that. Uh, got in the works and then people are bugging me to write memoirs and put all the dopey stories <coughs> excuse me put all my dopey stories down on paper before I hit the top of the escalator but uh, <laughs> I don't know I haven't uh, I haven't really uh, I'm not that uh, disciplined you know well yeah def definitely you you have to uh, to get into the motion of, of, of taking time to write on a, on a regular basis as well um, Hall of Fame, uh, Hall of Fame sports writer. Tell us about uh, getting word about being elected to the Hall of Fame. That must have been quite a moment for you. Uh, yeah, it was uh, like I've I've been uh, very very fortunate the last two, four or five years to be honored a number of times, and uh, it's uh, it's always been for my writing. And like I, I was honored with the Jack Graney Award in St. Mary's. Uh, 2011, but I don't really. I'm afraid to ask, but I, I'm not. I don't think this is for writing about uh, the 114th game of the season uh, story I wrote out of Cleveland one night. I think this is more for, you know, to be promoting, uh, using my pulpit or uh, to spread the gospel about Canadians. I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, how it all started was with uh, with a draft list, which probably about 95 we ran in the paper for about three or four years but in 95 before the internet there wasn't any uh, there wasn't any uh, anybody on the top 10 in our sales area which was Oakville to uh, Oakville to Oshawa so the guy said why don't you take it over to Canoe and I said what's Canoe he said well that's our website and I said what's a website <laughs> So we, I think the top guy was from Quebec, and the second guy was from BC, and the third guy was from Alberta, and I forget the the rest of it. But there wasn't any local kids, so the guy the guy refused to run it. So we put the we put the top ten list over there, and then the guy with Mike Simpson, he was a real idea guy. He says, well, what about the Canadians in college? What about the minor leagues? What about this? What about that? And it just kind of kept growing and growing and growing, and it's a labor of love, you know, an, an expensive labor of love. But well, yes, it definitely is. As I said, uh, taking taking a look at the at the site to to keep up to date with uh, who's where, doing what and how. It's uh, certainly you've got to spend a ton of time doing that. All right, as in baseball, uh, three strikes are out. So for the third time, we're going to try and get Doug on again. Doug, are you there yet? And that's okay. He's done. Uh, Hello, Doug. Is that you? Hello. Yeah, it's me. Okay, go ahead. You've got a question? Bob, with uh, all your extensive work with uh, amateur baseball players in, in Canada and coverage of those players, um, what difference is um, baseball academies like John Gilles uh, across Canada making uh, in terms of uh, player development of these young, uh, these, these young people? Bob, were you able to get that question? Um, I was with Doug right up until the last uh, last sentence. I didn't hear. Uh, I, he was talking about the, the, all the academies and the development, but I did not hear, hear the tail end of it. I'm sorry. He was talking specifically, I think, uh, about uh, JG's uh, baseball academy here, how that is helping to develop the, the Canadian players, I guess, obviously, uh, here in northern Ontario, and, and it's something that... Oh, okay. Okay, I got you. Yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, as I say, I had first-hand knowledge. I was up there... Uh, let me think, uh, the year I went, there was Mark Picard was there, and then uh, uh, they, they had a workout at uh, the college on the Friday, and they had workouts 
Saturday, and uh, Greg Zahn flew in, and then there was the banquet Saturday night. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I remember Greg Zahn's words were, uh, um, you guys can make this, turn this into a hot spot. Because, and, uh, and what he said was, because uh, he says, all it takes is one guy to go away to school and do, uh, or to get drafted or signed, and the, and the coach or the, the scout will say, any more like you at home? And uh, and they'll say, sure, there sure are. And um, so, uh, anyways, that was the year uh, Dylan Rio was drafted by the Orioles. And, uh, or that June, he was drafted, and he had a really good uh, first year. I think he had seven or eight wins uh, last summer. And, uh, and I remember, I think at the time, there was just the one player from the school, and, and this year, uh, going to school in the States. I think this year, uh, Jean Gilles sent me, oh, I think there was four or five kids who were either in school or had signed their letter of intent, a letter of intent to go away in September. So that, that that's that, that's growth, and that's what we're looking for. You know, or that's that's what you want to see. You know, like the way it, you know, it was 490 in uh, 1999, and now it's over 800. So that that all helps. That, that's I think the, I think he does a great job, and he's. Yeah, he's been exposed to the good coaching in the Ontario Cup with uh, with the provincial teams, uh, where uh, where they which leads to the national championship at the Canada Cup as well. Do you have a follow up question, Doug? Or you're good. All right, uh, we've got uh, sports Hall of Fame sports writer Bob Elliott on the phone. We're going to take one quick break, and uh, we'll be back once again. The phone number you see at the bottom of your screen in Sudbury, it's 705-586-3044. And our out-of-town toll-free number is 1-844-710-3808. You're watching Sports Talk Now on Eastlink TV. is hungry, it's hard to learn. One in three children in Canada come to school hungry every day. Last year alone, Breakfast for Learning served more than 30 million meals across the country. Welcome back to Sports Talk. Now we're talking baseball. We uh, had Blue Jays general manager Alex Anthopoulos uh, with the on the program right off the top. And very, very happy to have with us uh, Hall of Fame baseball writer uh, Bob Elliott. And, J.G., you wanted to talk Bob a little bit. Yeah, but I just wanted to, to thank you. I was telling <laughs> Gary that, you know, in my opinion, I think you're the godfather of baseball for, for Canada. Because, you know, like two minutes ago you are rambling off, you know, how many wins Dylan had. I don't know how you remember the things you, you, you're able to remember. But, uh, and people might have told you, and I think you're a very humble person, but you really need to be thanked for uh, what you're doing for baseball in Canada. 
Um, a lot of these kids would not be getting the opportunities um, if you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. So, you know, we just want to thank you on behalf, and I don't think it's just about Sudbury. I think that the country wants to thank you for everything you've done for us anyways. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, Bob, now, obviously, the development, you, you've mentioned the numbers, and, and it is a, a, an, a, an amazing growth pattern. And you take a look at, you know, on a pro obviously, the goal is to, to, to lead into a professional life. I mean, that's what they would love to do. And, and even this Blue Jays uh, current team, the, the couple of moves they made, picking up uh, Russell Martin and, and Michael Saunders as well, and, and not just because they're Canadian. I mean, at one time it was like, oh, there's, um, I think, Dave McKay, and he's from Canada, or, or whoever it might have been, and it was kind of a unique situation that you could have a Canadian ball player. But uh, based upon the numbers that you're seeing, um, it's not just because it's a Canadian baseball team. It's because they deserve their... Uh, deserve to be there and and perhaps in the future not too distant future you're going to see more and more of a Canadian makeup on that uh, on that ball club yeah I, I, I hope so I mean uh, Paul Beeson uh, uh, you know like he's very uh, pro pro Canadian and uh, received the order of Canada and uh, it's good for baseball in Canada that he's in charge and not 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 somebody from the states uh, because it, we could have reverted to uh, the days uh, when the Belgian Brewers owned the team and uh, Ricciardi was, uh, was J.P. Ricciardi was in charge, and it was basically, here's 20 grand uh, to Baseball Canada, now don't bother us. Like the Blue Jays, they, go, they, they have to be commended for what they do, uh, 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 both going across the country uh, with their clinics and the Tournament 12, I can remember, early 90s they would play when the, when the elite teams were ready to play they bring and the Blue Jays were on the road they'd bring a team in from uh, Montreal and they would they would play indoors at the Sky Dome like before the Diamonds were ready and uh, they, they wouldn't allow any of the scouts in of course I might have went up to the top and allowed let somebody in but uh, uh, now they do that tournament 12 and everybody's just you know like uh, there was 20 one or 23 teams there last year, I forget. But uh, it, they're, they're being good corporate citizens, and they allow those schools in. And Zach Pop, uh, the right-handed pitcher who Toronto drafted, uh, the University of Kentucky saw him there. So, I mean, it would be the, to their advantage to not to, to, to have this wonderful resource of Canadian kids and not expose them. But uh, the, the, I, I do, you know, they, they've, they have some faults like anything else, but in, in that tournament 12 is and their clinics it, they're being very good uh, very good citizens uh, helping the kids uh, get exposed and uh, allowing people to see them so you know we had mentioned Saunders and Martin but I, you know we're looking back at Canadian baseball players so you're looking at MVPs like you know we got Walker's an MVP Morneau is an MVP Votto is an MVP Bay is a rookie of the year you know and those are just those are Canadian players like that's that's got to say lots for our country like what are you hearing when you go you know, from stadium to stadium, you're talking to other people. Like, what's the, is, is there a buzz about Canadians? Well, the, the thing is, they, they have, I, I think, as you know, and talking to your college coaches, they have an excellent reputation, the Canadians do, uh, like uh, uh, whether it's a California kid or a Florida kid, oh, it's raining, you know, we, we don't want to play, the field's too wet. I mean, John Six, our guys, they're used to playing in rain. They're used to, be, they're used to playing on bad fields. They're... they're a lot of them, not so much uh, as before, but a lot of them come from the hockey background. Nowadays, you, you're just getting on some strictly baseball guys. But I had a guy, I had a guy from Australia. Uh, I don't know, uh, it was a newspaper or something. He he sent me an email the other day, and he wanted he wanted me to compare. He wanted wanted me to explain to him if if I really thought that. Canada was ahead of Australia as far as baseball uh, producing players was, and I, and I just rhymed those the three MVPs, like like JP JG just mentioned in nine years, and and Jason Bay and Eric Gagne with the Cy Young Award, and and, and the Australians had one All Star, Dave Nielsen. So I mean, it's not even a, uh, like I could see the judge on Law and Order saying that ah, case dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a short conversation. With a little bit of uh, Sudbury, you shared the story at the banquet, but I think more people need to hear it. Can you share your Sudbury Wolves story when you came to Sudbury? 
off the screen. <laughs> yeah, let me think. That would have been. Uh, that would have been uh, late seventies or early eighties. I, I was I was covering the Ottawa sixty sevens, and uh, so they went up. Oh well, well, Randy Boyd. Or, no, Jimmy Fox was playing, and uh, Connors and Zone, and uh, I don't know. They they were. Uh, I'd never been in the building, and I was sitting there, and uh, Sudbury scored, and uh, I nearly jumped out. Uh, like, I've been to the Calgary Cannons game, and they hit a home run, and uh, the cannon goes off, and I, like, it scares me, you know, like, boom, you know. So I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, uh, this wolf comes screaming across the top of the building. I mean, I, th- I didn't know what was going on. I thought I was being attacked, but, uh, but it stopped short of the press box. Yeah. <laughs> there there was one... Me. Sorry, go ahead, Bob. Uh, no, I was just uh, totally scared by it all, yeah. Well, there was one playoff game, and this was a number of years ago, probably back in the mid-'70s, and uh, it was a playoff-type atmosphere, very, very close game, and Sudbury scored late or, or won, won, uh, won the game in overtime, I guess it must have been. And the fellow who was in charge of, of um, running the particular motor, right, got so involved in it, that he forgot to put the brake on it, and the wolf, no. the wolf is is supposed to stop. But at this particular point in time, <laughs> they had the uh, the end of it tied to the uh, to the Sudbury Arena clock, and the wolf hit the clock so hard that he ended up knocking out a, a bunch of a bunch of teeth and and breaking off one of the legs. <laughs> so that that was uh, playoff hockey at its best, and I can still recall the the look. Oh, it was just. Man. Yeah, it was it was a frightening night for sure, and uh, that <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, now you're you're down in Florida now. What, what's your game plan for the next little while? Are you down full full spring training, or, or where do you go from here? I was in Arizona for a week, and uh, I arrived here uh, Sunday, and I'll be here till the 19th, and then I'll go home, and uh, then I'll go to Montreal. On the, I think on the, I'm not sure. I'll just take the train to Montreal. They play the two games there for uh, they play Cincinnati the two games and every you know when they announced that they were going to be back for after 96,000 last year they they, they figured uh, well you won't get it the crowd won't be as big but with Russell Martin there I, I think it'll be even larger and then uh, they play Friday night Saturday night whatever that is and then I'll fly to New York Monday Sunday and then uh, they open Monday on the, that's April 6th at Yankee Stadium and then they go to Baltimore and then I'll come home after that Back to home cooking. Yes. Well, just a so-so cook, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I, I do thank you so much, Bob, uh, for taking time uh, out of spring training to uh, to join us tonight. We really do appreciate you calling, and uh, all the best for yourself and for the Blue Jays this year. We'll certainly be looking for your column in the Toronto Stun and, of course, online, the Canadian Baseball Network website as well. Thank you so much, Bob, for all you do. Thank you, guys. All the best. Bob Elliott, uh, Hall of Fame uh, sports writer, and uh, I'm sure, uh, I, I know it's, we've only only had an hour long, but probably could have went on for hours and hours with all the stories that you would build up over that type oh of a career. My gosh, man. He, he's a great guy. Then, Yeah, exactly, the stories. Now, what does it mean to a fellow like you who's involved in developing players to have that type of an asset? And that's actually exactly what I was going to say. That's what he is, uh, you know. And it's funny, if you asked me two, three years ago, I, I just looked at these people and not, not that I don't now, but to be able to call Bob and say, what do you think of this player? What do you think of you know, this association? Should I send a kid here? What do you think about this school? Just to have those people exactly as a network, and uh, it's unbelievable. And, and the thing is, he, he doesn't blow you off. He'll get back to you. And several people, you'll email him on the baseball network about something, he'll get back to you. He's unbelievable. I don't know how he does what he does. J.G. Lebeck, thank you so much. Or Laroc, I should say, thank you so much for being here. And uh, to our guests as well, Bob Elliott, as well as uh, Alex Anthopoulos earlier. Uh, next week, we're going to talk to a couple guys who've been punched in the face harder than you could ever imagine. Uh, Mitch Gagne, MMA fighter, and uh, Gord Apolloni will be aboard. And uh, we look forward to your calls one week from tonight uh, as we uh, bring back Sports Talk Now from 7 to 8, right here on East Link TV.